evangelist and the uh, the DevNet team at, at Cisco, and uh, I have the pleasure of being your your host. And we have a great set of talks here, um, focusing on when apps meet analytics. And I think you, you'll see we have an interesting set of talks that covers different areas of analytics. Of course, analytics can be applied in a, a lot of different areas. We have this one on neural networks. We have one on DevOps. We have one that talks about uh, network data and when you apply analytics to that. And so. Um, I think you'll find this very interesting, both uh, whether you're an, a developer that's looking to tap into this uh, information that's available and do something with analytics with it, or even as an end user, you know, changing our lives every day when people are applying every, what they can with data sets and analytics to solve problems like what you're seeing with uh, Uber and Lyft and the way that, that, you know, new business models that they brought in. So, um, or even just using mapping software to figure out the best route to get for yourself, right, when you're driving. I, I think that's very simple examples, and we'll, we'll hear some better examples here. So uh, with that, I won't take any more time. I'll uh, turn it over to uh, Chase um, Oakwine. Did Perfect. I pronounce it right? All right. Perfect. Yeah, and you're with Keyhole uh, Keyhole Software? Software, yes, sir. Yeah, so he's going to talk with us a bit about neural networks. And uh, we, uh, we learned that we have a shared uh, kind of fascination and appreciation with train uh, travel. So. I'm, I'm hoping you mix something into your talk about that, but, Probably that, won't, but <laughs> <laughs> I won't eat up any more of your time. All right, guys. Hey, I'm Chase. A uh, couple things you probably noticed right off. One, I'm very tall. Two, I have an amazing belt buckle. Yes. <laughs> uh, so a little bit about me. First and foremost, I am a servant. My goal in life is to help you be as successful as possible. Uh, you can reach out to me at any time uh, via LinkedIn, via uh, Twitter, et cetera, and I would love to help you uh, in whatever it is that you're doing and make you better at it. Um, I'm a Keyhole team member. I'm curious to a fault, and this is a big point. I love statistics, and that sounds like weird to say. I love statistics. If, that, if I were to go back in time to me at 18 years old, 19 years old, and say, hey, one day you're going to love statistics, I would look at myself and say, hey, where'd you get a time machine? And I'd be like, well, that's a good question. I don't know. So I have a big warning. This is important. We're going to talk about math, right? That's scary for folks sometimes because I know a lot of us, uh, we probably didn't come into this from a collegiate background, from an academic background. We got into the industry via whatever mechanism we did. Um, maybe don't have as strong a uh, math presence as, as some of our peers, right? But I, th I believe in each and every one of you. I know that you can get this. Is there anyone here who can't uh, add and subtract? Nope, everybody's good on that, good deal. What about multiply and divide? We're good on that. He's a little fuzzy, but I think we're good. Awesome. You are all qualified mathematicians. You're all able to benefit from this course. Uh, the other thing I want to say is, I know I just said we're going to talk about math and we're going to talk about neural networks. Uh, I've given this talk sometimes, people go, hey, I didn't want to learn about math, I want to learn about neural networks. It's, they are math. <laughs> That's all they are. So i got a couple outcomes for you guys. One, I want to help you have a better understanding of some key areas around neural networks, what makes them powerful, why they exist. Uh, two, I want to make you a champion at work. I want to make you it so that you can feel confident going back into your workplace and saying, hey, I know enough now to be very dangerous. And this seems like something we should maybe look into, perhaps. And then three, I want to help you guys build the next big thing. There is a lot of potential in the industry for ways that we can leverage this, for ways that we can use this, for ways that we can be more powerful in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in our businesses. And so I want to help you guys do that. So to start, I want to start with just a very brief demo. Normally this talk is 45 minutes, but I got 20. So we're going to cram as much as we can into it. I'm going to do a quick demo, three minutes. Uh, we're going to see how we can take images like this, like this five, this zero, this four, and this one, and some associative data that tells us that this is a five, this is a zero, this is a four, this is a one. And we're going to take the pixels, these black and white values, we're going to convert them into numbers, we're going to crunch them through, and we're going to figure out what those, we're going to teach a, a machine to uh, parse that. And so to do that, we're going to be using uh, TensorFlow, and I'm not going to go deep into the details here. If you want to get with me later and you want to talk about the details, I'll gladly show you in depth any of this stuff. But it goes like this. We have our inputs. We're going to take in 784 pixels. Uh, we have our weights, uh, which we're going to talk about in a minute. 
We have some biases, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. And then we have our predictions. This is what's going to be output. We want to output some predictions. Um, TensorFlow has some nice sample data for us. It's going to make this easier. What we're going to do is we're going to find out how much error we have every time we, we do a run through to see how close to accurate are we. And then we're going to do this gradient descent optimization. Basically, what this gradient uh, descent optimization is going to do is say, hey, we have some error. We want less error. Make it less error, basically, in a nutshell. So from there, we're going to get some data. We're going to get some inputs, and we're going to get some known outputs. We know that this is what the output should be, right? And we're going to get a batch of 100, and we're going to test them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to feed that batch of inputs and the expected outputs, and we're going to get some predictions back, and we're going to say, hey, you're way off. Make it better. And we're going to keep doing that until it gets more accurate. That is basically, in a nutshell, how this works. So we're going to go ahead and start it off. Boop, boop. Make sound effects. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. So uh, this will take just a second for this to get up and running. Uh, again, we're using the TensorFlow library. This uh, example project is on the TensorFlow website, tensorflow.org. Do, 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 waiting. This is exciting, I know. There we go, now it's starting to do stuff. All right, so what we see here, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the execution. So this is the percentage of accuracy. This is how accurate are we getting. So we started off really not very accurate at all. We had like a 40% accuracy rate. And we start getting a little bit more accurate, a little bit more accurate, a little bit more accurate. We're already up into the 79% accuracy. And we're gonna let this keep going. And this will keep going. And uh, if I let it keep going, it'll get to about a 93 to 95% accuracy with this very basic setup. So doesn't take a lot of code to get started. Again, all of that code is available on tensorflow.org, but let's talk about what it's actually doing. Because that's the nuts and bolts of this, that's what we want to talk about. This is a neural network. We take in some inputs, we have some weights associated to those inputs, and then that gives us another set of inputs, which is this hidden layer. Then we have some weights associated with that, and then we have our outputted prediction. That is all a neural network is, that is all that it's doing. So let's first talk a little bit about what machine learning is. It's a branch of statistics, and basically it's just the ability to learn without being programmed. So um, to, to get a sense of that, we, we gotta talk about statistics a little bit. What is statistics? Um, statistics is just the analysis of a large set of data. Now what's interesting about that, statistics is relatively new. Statistics, as from a mathematical standpoint, is a fairly new form of statistics. I mean, it's a fairly uh, new form of mathematics. And it came about from the study and collection of census data and tax data. So in Germany in the 1700s, they said, hey, we got all this data. We need to do something with it. We, we, need, to figure, we, need, to, we need to glean some insights. And so uh, there was a book written called The Study of State, right? And it was how to be good at managing state entities, government entities, right? And that was where we got the origin of the word statistics. So just to put this into perspective, Euclidean geometry happened in 300 BC, very long time ago. Statistics didn't happen until the mid 1700s. We didn't get our first formalized books on what we consider statistics today around probability averages, et cetera, until the early 1900s. So we're only about 120 years into statistics being a real thing. That's kind of powerful that we've done so much with it in so little time. Now, of course, as computer scientists, we know that we've just done a lot in general in that last 100 years, but to me, that's kind of amazing. So, why neural networks? What, what advantages do they give? Why would we use one? Well, most forms of machine learning uh, use uh, uh, linear regression models in order to find out where we should be trying to do, solve for our problem space. But there are inherently some difficulties with this, and there are problem types that it just can't solve for. Uh, so, with a traditional linear regression model, it looks like this. We've got some points of data. So let's say we've got some housing data. We've got square footage of home and price. So with a linear regression model, we can figure out this is the general slope of that data. So if we know the price, we can then extrapolate the square foot of home of what it should be and vice versa. But there's a lot of very simple scenarios where this just falls out of the window. 
So let's say we have these four pieces of data. True, false, uh, sorry, false, false, true, false, true, true, and true, false, right? Um, if we look at or, if we want to know or, this is pretty easy to do from a linear regression model. We can just put the line right there, boom. Everything that's on this side of the line, false. Everything that's on that side of the line, true. But what if we want to do an exclusive or? What if we want to say it's only true if it's 0, 1, or 1, 0? Not 1, 1. That one's false. 0, 0, that's false. So this is what Zora looks like, right? Um, so where do we put the line? Do we put the line here? Well, that's going to give us not correct answers. If we put the line here, still not correct, not correct, not correct. Because the correct answer is this. And you can't do that with a linear regression model. It's not possible to do that with a linear regression model. And so that's where the power of neural networks comes in because it allows us to shape much more complex um, domain spaces. Now, this is a fairly simple domain space, but it, it gives you some insight into what is possible. Because imagine this, where instead of these uh, two zones, you had 20 or 50 or 500. Right? That's where the problem space gets more elaborate. That's where the power comes in, is the ability to make discrete choices within that problem space. So what are some of the uses for this? We heard in the last session here in the theater of a great use case uh, using um, uh, GPS data um, to help improve traffic fatalities and collisions. Uh, but we see a lot of it in image recognition, a lot of it around self-driving cars and automation, robotics. And my field of study and where I'm getting the most value out of it is around predictive analytics. Let's take some data about what's happened in the past. Let's extrapolate that and then get some value about what we want to do in the future, right? Um, that's where I find the most value in it for me personally. Now, that said, um, it's entirely up to you and your problem space on what you want to do with it. There are a lot of uh, problem spaces that it works out well for. So what are the parts of it? How do we assemble one? How do we put it together? So again, this is our basic network. We have some inputs. These are number values. We have weights. These, think of these like percentages. Um, uh, so we're either going to make the, the input values bigger or smaller based off of those percentages. Uh, they can also be negative, so you can flip them around. That's going to give us a new set of values. And then we're going to do the same thing. That's going to give us a new set of values. So our inputs, again, just numerical data entered into the network, hidden. Values are then calculated. The values of those hidden nodes uh, and the weights, that's what the learning algorithm is doing. It's figuring out what these weights should be. Right? You don't know what those weights are in advance. It figures that out for you. That's where the value of, of, the, of the learning program comes in. And then your output, generally an output, uh, it outputs a value between 0 and 1 that can loosely be interpreted as probability of whether I want to do this thing or not do this thing. Now, where most of us get confuzzled um, whenever we go out and try to find out information about this type of stuff is we see diagrams like this and immediately go, Ugh! because this is scary, unless you've been actively in academia and in mathematics. But this is really simple because it's just basic math. Everything that's going on here is just basic math. This is all that a neural network is doing at its core. And this is going to seem too simple for it to be true, but it is absolutely true. This is what's happening. This is basically what it's doing. Uh, 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3 equals 4 plus 6 equals 10. Right? We're going to take multiples of numbers. We're going to add them together. That's all it's doing. It's not any more complicated than that. There are some other elements to it. But at its core, that's really all a neural network is. So don't be scared of it is what I'm getting at. So now, instead of just doing it with one set of numbers, we do it with uh, large sets of numbers, graphs of numbers, and then it looks more like this, but it's still the same thing. It's still just this. This is all that's happening, right? To add on to that, then what we do in our hidden layers is add some nonlinearity to it. Uh, this allows us to uh, make really discrete options and um, change the flow. Uh, of the numbers and, and, and how the weights are derived and, and turn them into something meaningful. So again, 
all of that just translates into this. Now you'll hear the word deep networks a lot. What is a deep network? What does that mean? Well, all we're gonna do in a deep network is add more of those hidden layers. So we, in between each layer, we're gonna have new weights that's gonna help us derive uh, to an answer. Um, why this is powerful, this allows us to ask really complex questions. Um, I, I don't recommend starting here. Uh, start with something simple like this, but in very complex problem spaces, this allows us to ask really intricate questions. Um, so I got a couple closing thoughts. So again, it's just basic math. Don't be afraid of it. Dig into it. Play around with it. Be wrong. Try again. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, the thing that I'll encourage you as you start learning, as you start going into these things, and as you start doing study in it, uh, if you have a background in data analytics, don't treat it like traditional tr data analytics. You won't get as much value out of it. What I see a lot of people doing is trying to use this to go get KPIs. So basically, they'll take in some data and they'll ask the question, hey, I want to I guess if this person makes $50,000 a year because then I want to go see, uh, because if they do, then I want to go market to them, right? That's the wrong question. The right question is, hey, I have some people. I want to make $2 million in additional profit next year. Who do I market to? Don't make those assumptions. Don't, you as, don't, don't let your hubris make you think that you're going to create a better solution to who you should be marketing to if you only knew this, right? Leverage its power to then say, okay, this is who I want to market to. And in order for us to um, get to the margins and get to where we want to be, here are the um, here's the data, here's how we get there, and let the, let the, uh, let the machine figure out that for you. Uh, if you can change the way that you ask questions in that kind of a manner, it will powerfully uh, change the types of questions you can ask inside of your organization, and it will powerfully um, add a lot of benefit to what you do on a daily basis. Um, and that's not just in that one case with marketing, um, that's in any kind of use case. Think about actions um, that can take place rather than discrete values. Um, sure, you can get discrete values out of it, but ultimately that's not where the power is. The power is what action should I take? What should I do? Uh, if you can ask those types of questions, you get a lot of value out of it. Again, I'm Chase. Um, please, if you see me around, I'm really approachable. I'd love to talk to you um, and ask as many questions as you want to, and I would love to help you. Thank you very, very much. Okay, uh, thanks, Chase. We do have uh, time for a couple questions, if anyone has any at this time. Just raise your hand, I'll run over, give you the mic. Oh, yep. I got a drone. Great, thanks. So uh, just in that case, the, um, the, uh, the number recognition problem that you just talked about, what, what were the inputs exactly? I was confused. The, uh, sorry, the inputs were the pixels. So there were 794 pixels inside that square. Uh, so we took the, the value of that pixel, 0 to 255. Okay. And we used that as the value, as the, as the inputs. So each one of those pixels. Value being either black or white? Uh, a range. So okay. somewhere between 0 and 255. Okay. So there's 255 possible Poss numbers right. that a pixel can represent. So whatever it was. For, so in some of those cases on the edges of numbers, you actually have like closer to gray. Um, so you may have like a, like a, um, a 75 or a 125. So okay. it's just whatever the pixel value is. And so the output layer would be? The output the layer number? would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Um, so which number does it represent? Okay. So 794 pixels in, what number is it? OK. Yeah. So it's basically just class, uh, classifying it into those 10 sets. In that particular example, By way yes, of sir. that activation function. Yep, yes, sir. OK. Yep. Great. Great any, question. Thank you. Any other questions? So. To get a little crazier, right? yeah, um, I love crazy. I mean, Good so what? What about a, a cat? What about you know? A what face, about a cat? a cat? I mean, so I'm I'm getting an idea from image recognition yeah. that you see when you do you know your your uh, captcha kind of things online. Yep. Like, what do you see? I'm just curious. Like, I mean, how do you tell a computer about sort of the world? I mean, you can tell about discrete numbers, but yeah. So the, so the way that it does that, uh, um, and that, and that gets into more complex uh, types of neural networks. Um, 
But generally the way that we do that is, let's say we have a large picture. Uh, we break it into smaller pictures and we scan across looking for a thing. And basically what we have is a lot of reference data that we initially say, this is what a cat looks like, right? Um, or whatever it is that we're, that we're training.